and welcome to an all-too-necessary edition of Ben's Junk. Aren't they all? Uh, now, as of, let me start with this, as of my filming this, I'm still editing episode number 100, but of course, uh, you'll see that before you see this. And, um, it, it, the episode's just gotten so unwieldy that the would-be segment where I go through and take a look at my setup, I just had to cut it. So, here we are. I mean, why have the episode get bigger when I could have the big going for the Ben's junk? Because, you know, keeping that dumb innuendo going. So, uh, there aren't really going to be a whole lot of surprises here. So, um, let's just get started here. This is the main machine, and this is the only thing that was fully functioning right out of the box. And I guess if you could only have one thing that worked right, right away, I guess this would be it. Uh, now, when I purchased all the stuff, I I wanted to be able to focus on making the episode, so I was not happy when I had to fix other stuff. I didn't want it cutting into what could have been a better concept uh, with better titles and stuff, and oh well. Um, I, I might have to do a commentary on episode 100. I, I guess I'll add that to my summer projects list. But anyway, let's just take a cruise through all the stuff. Here's the computer. And you got a couple of joystick ports, of which uh, I've just been using a, an old spare Atari joystick. And I, <laughs> silly me, I was having a hell of a time with this because I was just plugging into port number one. Because in my mind, if there's only one player playing a game, when you only want to use the first port, um, as it turns out, no. Most of the time, it's two. So, uh, <laughs> uh, thanks, Larry. Um, yeah, I, yeah, power switch, power supply, of which, let's take a quick look at that. Um, this is an aftermarket power supply, and that is because I was reading in a bunch of places that the original power supplies just run a little too hot, a little too powerful. And I tend to like having new parts for stuff anyway. So, um, yeah, I got this. It gets a little hotter than I'd like. Um, I guess it's no worse than my uh, laptop brick. But, yeah, um, this was 48 bucks or something. This episode was really expensive. I think it's a record breaker call it a hunch. But anyway, back to this. Uh, if we go to the back, we got the cartridge port here, of which I only have one cartridge, and I uh, it's visible solar system. And I only got it so I could test it to make sure it worked. And I got this from a used video game store around here who charged me way too much. And I was especially ticked when I saw that somebody had plucked this from a thrift store bin at some point and turned around and sold it to the game store because somebody paid 80 cents for this. Um, add another zero to it and you'll have, uh, and move the decimal accordingly and you will have what I had for this non-game. And this is one of those definitive things where it was, uh, a book would be better. You'd learn a lot more from a book, because it's not really a game. It's intended as an educational title, and there just wasn't enough room on these ROM cards to, at least at the time, I don't think, to really do anything substantial with it. And so, uh, yeah, this would have been part of the segment with uh, the business software and stuff, but uh, um, I didn't want to have to switch gears just for this one thing. But, uh, whatever. Moving on. Uh, channel 3 and 4 switch to be used in tandem with the RF output, which is what I intended to use throughout the episode initially, because, like, I've been playing the NES for years with just the RF, and it looks just fine. And, um, uh, that's not really the case. But, uh, I've got, like, three spare Nintendo uh, RF thingies here. And uh, the picture is just bad. And if you've seen the episode already, you've seen in the opening Pavand segment that, yeah, this wasn't really going to cut it. But I didn't really, I, I don't have time to go back and fight with it too much. So, uh, yeah, lo-fi for the sake of lo-fi for that one segment. 
And the reason why I haven't gone back and redone it is because I don't have a great way of saving anything. I don't have any blank floppies, unfortunately. And uh, I tried to order... This is the AV output, the proper one. And I ordered a 5-pin version, which would just run around the bottom here. And I was sent an 8-pin by accident and uh, or maybe it wasn't an accident because it was all sales final um but the eight pin which is really more for a real monitor and i think it might be a little too much power for uh, a tv which is how i've mostly been doing this or a vcr and the pins it doesn't work anyway the pins are too tight it, it seems to be the right configuration but they're just a little too tight um, I can fit the basic ring in there, but as far as the pins go, nope. I'd have to probably bend all the pins in, and I just don't want to go there. So, uh, yeah, all sales final, 14 bucks down the drain right there. And then uh, I finally got the right thing, and this is what you've mostly been seeing in the episode. Uh, let's see here. We've got the data set port. We've got the, I believe this was for the printer and or modem. Um, and that's about it for this part. Now, I was a little bemused by this. Here's the floppy drive, the 1541. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's bigger than the computer. And it weighs at least twice as much. And this needed a little loving, too. It needed a, a definite cleaning, both outside and in. And a teeny bit of tweaking, which uh, I'm not even sure how I did it, but I I did. And, uh, yeah, there it is. So now we get on to the big problem of this episode and for something I wound up not even really using in the episode and that would be the data set and this thing was filthy as hell and this thing's been through the wars it's got all sorts of nicks and you know just scratches and everything and uh, this was quite a cleanup project but worse yet it didn't really work so just, I mean, I could get it to play and rewind and stuff, so my theory was that the head was misaligned. And so what I did was I just took a blank audio tape and I just made a bogus one-line program just to make sure that things were working. Um, of course, it would only read back with the misalignment, but it worked, and so after that it just became trying to get this thing back into whack. And I, of course, being a good kid, wanted to use a program for this, a real program. And I just couldn't find a working one. And of course, these days, you're stuck downloading the audio and piping it out to uh, a cassette deck. And so there's another ball of alignment issues. So I just wound up... In the end, because I couldn't get anything to work, I just downloaded some basic games like Pole Position and just put them on a tape and just took this thing off completely, hit play so it would all line up, and then stuck a jeweler's screwdriver in this little hole, and I would just turn it an eighth of a turn clockwise. I'd give the game another go, see if it would read, and just trial and error. Um, of which this is still glitchy because, uh, you know, tape dropouts and this still only runs at the same speed as a normal tape. One, I believe one and seven eighths inches for this. Uh, that would make sense because otherwise I, there'd be something very, very wrong with how I downloaded games. Um, but yeah, this was just uh, an absolute nightmare. And this is what stopped production dead in its tracks. And, uh, as I said, dropouts, so games would glitch out and freak out. And, and in an effort to try and save uh, tapes, I was, for a while, trying to use just one of these old car adapter things. And that didn't really do anything. It just You can't really get enough juice, at least I couldn't, 
uh, to transfer from this little guy to the computer uh, data set, as it were. And uh, last part, it just diskettes. Aren't you impressed? Anyway, uh, let me get the 64 back in the frame here, just so you have something to look at to end on. And that's it for this Ben's Junk. I'll see you again soon.